morning everybody morning. thanks for coming out my name is Ken Brett uh, I'm the Eastern Canadian sales manager with Alpine this is Jeremy Johnson he's uh, one of our highly capable DSMs here in Ontario and I will add all our DSMs are certified crop advisors and spend lots of time out in growers fields first of all everybody happy to have a live event again rather than sitting at the computer it's awesome I just got back from Prince Edward Island what's really awesome there's no mask and you go into restaurants and everything once I had the nasal swab at the border so it's uh, hopefully we get to that soon here in Ontario it's refreshing and they were really busy so we want to take a few minutes of your time and uh, tell you about some newer products since we didn't really have a session here last year um, if there's too much ro road noise just move up a little bit uh, we've got to give this eight times so I won't yell all day long um, We've undergone a bit of a name change on this product line right off the bat. Um, we've hopefully, the last few years, been talking about K-Tech. It's now gonna be Bio-K, and it's, it's Bio-K is our new form of potassium technology. It's a potassium acetate-based form of potassium fertilizer. Na our parent company, Nature's Alpine Solutions, do have a patent on it. It's that unique, and we're one of the only companies with it. Um, to standardize, the name Canada the US and maybe even beyond we do some initiatives when things are back to normal or back when things were normal promoting this product in China and even the Netherlands so we're, we're more wanting to take it a little more global and one name's ideal for that so when you think of bio K and I'll probably even slip up a couple of times myself and say at K Tech we're still in the uh, deprogramming process but bottom line it's potassium acetate fertilizer technology Potassium for a crop, there's always your potassium component or the cation. So, you know, if you picture that as the cation and there's always a hitchhiker with it. Sometimes it's chloride in potassium muriate of potash. Sulfate of potash, it's a sulfate. And that's the negative charge. Your potash is the positive charge. In this case, it's acetate. And you're thinking, big deal, what's the big thing with acetate? And I'll, I'll step back a little bit and say where it came from, because I think it's a pretty good story as well. Nature's Alpine Solutions is a pretty big company. Alpine's just one little part of it. Um, we also have an industrial division. And one of the things our industrial division sells is runway de-icer. And as you might imagine, when you fly to take your significant other to an exotic southern destination next March, hopefully, and you take off from Toronto or London Airport that they've de-iced the runway they really can't use stuff that corrodes on runways so you can't use typical salts potassium acetates their go-to product and we have a large large chunk of that market at the big airports and they they put potassium acetate on it keeps the runway keeps anything from freezing on the runway so that's really where the technology came from somewhere along the line people figured out it was a pretty good fertilizer material the potash is the potash. When it, when it breaks down and dissolves, it's no different than the K from any other potassium source. What makes this really cool is acetate also has a function in the plant. So it's just not leaching away and being no good like a chloride part of potassium chloride. It's a natural plant metabolite. When it gets in the plant, it's part of, I don't, I get flashbacks from university chemistry in this, but it, it's part of the energy cycle in the plant the the Krebs cycle it's called and it goes in to make acetyl CoA which I slept through some of those classes and didn't do real well in them but it, it's a plant it helps drive the energy process in the plant so it's kind of a double whammy you're getting the potassium and the acetate it's the base for fatty acids auxins sterols gibberellins amino acids and chlorophyll the other neat thing about acetate when we get into a soil application so you're putting it through your starter fertilizer and we got a couple of new products for sideband applications I'm going to tell you about. When acetate gets into the soil, it's the prefer preferred food source for your soil mycorrhizae. You're all starting to hear a whole lot more about soil health, feeding the soil biology. This is one of the things that feeds that soil biology and I have a slide later on that, or I guess a slide's the wrong word, but a, a poster on that later on. So I'm going to break it down into soil applied and, and foliar applied. Um, what are the advantages when you put it on the soil? And I've already touched on the one. It, the, I'll start at the third bullet point. It feeds your soil mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae help trans, transfer phosphorus into the roots. It, it's just part of that healthy soil biology. 
It's also the most soluble form there is of potassium for a soil application. It breaks down very, very good. I have a chart on that later. And the other thing, of course, if you're familiar with Alpine, we're putting the fertilizer right on the seed, so you don't want a lot of salt there. And it's, it also does come with a very low salt index. When we switch to an over-the-top application, a foliar application, um, I gave this presentation last week at the Chesterville in the Ottawa Valley, and it was pretty neat. We were beside a great big haggy sprayer, and I said, this isn't a sprayer, it's a nutrient applicator. So lots more foliar nutrients getting on when the big spray rigs go over the field. So don't always think of them as a crop protection applicator. So when we get into the over-the-top applications, tank mix with a crop protection product, product the first two are the same as is the soil applied very soluble and a low salt index so on the leaf you want to break down quickly and not not burn it the new word you're going to learn today is the point of deliquescence and it's a big big fancy word um we didn't even know about it till i talked to greg patterson at anl labs we worked close with greg on a few things and he he said well that potassium acetate has a low point of deliquescence what is it um essentially it's the relative humidity at which a product on a leaf will re-wet itself to be available to get in, in through that leaf stomata and into the plant to do good. So picture we sprayed those soybeans. Don't look too close at our soybeans. There's some bean leaf beetles around here as there always is. And when there was no farm show this year, there was no spraying going on. So they're not pretty, but there's beans there. Anyway, you spray those beans over the top, maybe with your fungicide timing or insecticide. The, the, the fertilizer product dries on that leaf surface. It doesn't take long to happen. What the point of deliquescence is a measure of is the relative humidity in the air at which it re-wets itself to be available to go in, and it's only 22%. So there's not many days when you're spraying here in the summer that our humidity is lower than that. There's, there's likely none, quite frankly, and you'd have to get to Western Canada where it wouldn't maybe become an issue. The other neat thing with it, it's a very small molecule size, so it, it's easy to get it into the plant. And then the final thing about them in a foliar application, they're very tank mixable. And I'm gonna touch on a couple of products later on here, but I always put a disclaimer with tank mixing, don't take it too far. Like don't throw eight things in your tank and pretend to be a chemist, but we've barely met any crop protection products that these products don't get along with in the tank um, from the fungicides, herbicides, and insecticides. I think Jeremy, one time you had a three two or three way mix it maybe had a glitch but we tend to learn about them and avoid them a little bit so you know ask your dealer or, or ask one of our guys but and if all else fails you can do a jar test and i know nobody does them but you can um the other good thing with a lot of our applications here in ontario when we get into these nutrient timings on a crop we're usually at some higher water volumes you know you put a fungicide on you want 15 20 gallons usually of water. We're not Western Canada doing the five gallon thing. So that, that covers a lot of sins on these products for us. So I mentioned I'd show you a couple of charts about the salt index and the solubility. On the left side, we have the salt index of these and Alpine uh, should be by okay, 43.8. Moving down the road to some worse ones, you can see a myriad of potash at the bottom at 116, like almost three X is salty. So pretty, pretty benign on the salt side of things. Um, just a little education about salt index. It's a relative measure. So to really get a salt index reading, you need all, you know, in this case, four products and test them the same way. <clears throat> it's fine for us to say ours is 43.8, but if you see literature from another company and it says it's 25, it, unless they test both of them the same test, it doesn't mean a thing. Usually salt index is just an electrical conductivity reading where they uh, just put electrodes in and see how the electrons flow through it. So just be a little cognizant of that when you're looking at salt indexes. The next is the solubility. Um, this is from the Journal of Plant Nutrition about, and I don't know the units on it, it's probably how many mils can go in so much water to break down, but Alpine Bio K right at the top at 255 and then slowly moving down the list. There's a, this is a competitive product at 107, not bad. K-thio, a little bit of K-thio used. That's kind of the cousin of ammonium thiosulfate is 96. And then at the very bottom, we have potassium chloride. We all know potassium chloride will break down in, in solution. We do a little bit of it ourselves for some industrial applications, but it takes a lot of water to break down muriate upon ash. Uh, 
I mentioned earlier about what it does in the soil for the microbial life. This is a study done at uh, back in 2015 at Texas A&M. Had some soil biology in a sample. This is the control, just the ionized water that they fed that soil biology in the soil. On the left side, we have potassium hydroxide, an older form of potassium. Then we have potassium carbonate. So you see they've actually hurt. This is the measure of the soil life. They actually knocked it back a little bit. So you hurt the soil biology. When we added bio K, it, it exploded. It went up nearly 3x by feeding, feeding acetate in the soil, helped the soil mycorrhizae out, and it multiplied that soil population. Some pictures of roots and a little root story. Uh, I'm always leery of, you know, pulling one plant here and one there and, and hey, look, I got bigger roots. He's not here today. Alpine do have a, a national agronomy manager now and he's got a really cool new, I won't call it a toy, a uh, device. It's called a root scanner and it looks like your typical scanner you'd have in your office. It's the software that makes the difference. So we can lay roots in and it, it does a scan and it's, it's a bit of a slow process. Um, but the neat thing it measures rather than just the weight of the roots, it measures the length, the thickness, and really key the number of tips. And we've been fooled a lot now on, on the number of baby root tips you get. And that's where things really happen in, in uptake through roots. It's, it's not that big, long, tough section of the root. It's at the tip where it's secreting exudates to feed the soil biology. And then the soil biology is helping nutrients get back in the plant. So, that's a side note, but stay tuned. We'll likely be seeing some more on our root scanner. It's a, it's a really neat thing. This is an example of Alpine G241S. That's our soil starter with Bio-K in it. And in this case, and I don't know if you've been over to the Precision Talk yet, um, they put our new product Alpine K19S through the wings, so kind of out on the sidewall of the corn. And you can see with what, by adding more Bio-K, it, it did get a lot bigger root mass. And, we are seeing this, and I got another story on the root scanner later, but um, lots of ways to reallocate that placement, get more of this good product in there and help the plant get to a good start. Oh, there's two there. This is our outdoor power plant. It doesn't work too bad. So what products do we have bio -K in? On the soil applied side, I think I gave away my sample bottle last week. I think. A lot of you are likely familiar with our flagship starter we've had at Alpine since about 1975, Alpine G24. What we did was we ramped it up a little bit and turned it into Alpine G241S and we're really focused on it. We, first of all, we have yield results. There is a good payback on, on jumping to it. So it's the first two numbers haven't changed, 624 and it's a four phosphorus, or sorry, a four potash and then 1% sulfur. The good thing we didn't change the phosphorus it's still 80 percent in the ortho form for highly highly good availability on the seed to get the crop off to a good start one s it's not going to do all your sulfur needs you're still going to need sulfur from another source or two but again it's the starter concept a little wee bit to get that plant off to a good start potassium is derived from bio k we've visually seen it right as soon as we started working with the product you could see it side by side with the old product, a little greener, which is likely coming from two sources, the sulfur and the more available potash, getting the, getting the crop off to a better start. A Couple of other products that are likely really new to you guys, or one in particular on the soil side is our Alpine K19S. And we, we love throwing numbers around. It's our, it's our system of naming products. So K19S is a zero, zero, 19 potassium and 6% sulfur. It's uh, very heavy on bio K potassium. Where this product's going to fit in, and we've. What we, form of sulfur are you using? Uh, this will be from potassium thiosulfate. SO4 or just straight S? Thiosulfates are a combination of straight S and SO4, they're 50 50. So it's got a bit of both. Um, so this is a new kind of market space for Alpine. It's a companion product. As I mentioned earlier, you could put it on through your wings on a furrow jet system if you're into a dual system on a planter and Sean at Precision would love to tell you about that. You could put it through those conceal wheels in, in a side band on your planter. 
also mixes really well with UAN. So if you wanted a little bit of potassium and sulfur with some broadcast UAN on your wheat, for example, really good fit if you're into sideband and UAN, uh, you know, on your four to six leaf corn. Two minutes. What kind of leader are you, Pierre? Oh, okay. They started earlier. Um, on the foliar applied, I'll, I can speed up. We've had this one. This is a really, really good foliar, Alpine K20S, 3020, 8% sulfur. You won't get any higher sulfur in any products for foliar application. Also carrying boron, manganese, and calcium. So real good bean product, usually targeting it at the fungicide timing, early flower initiation. Basically when we foliar a soybean plant, what we're trying to do, you've all seen it, is maximize the pods up through through the middle on these nodes. Like, you know, it's a huge difference if you get three instead of two or four instead of three. It makes tons of flowers at each node. You want to retain as many as you can. Um, I'll skip a couple maybe. This is brand new a couple of years ago. I'm getting really good uptake, Alpine F18 Max. And it's more a multivitamin, 846. The six potassium is from BioK. A full 1% zinc and a full 1% manganese. So think of this for, for your three main crops, wheat, corn, and beans. They all like those micronutrients. Also has some boron and obviously some copper in it to give it the nice uh, slushy blue color. One liter an acre. So it's, that's, there's no advantage to going more in any plots. They've had this product in the States a lot of years. We're getting huge uptake on this product because of that. One liter an acre, mixes with everything very very good results greens the crop up likely from you know obviously the nitrogen good available potash and the micronutrient load in it i uh, probably down to 30 seconds now right there um just a couple of products to wrap up i don't know how much you follow the news and everything we've all been in a bit of a vacuum the last year and a half but about two years ago alpine our ownership changed and we're now owned by wilbur ellis which is really really cool wilbur ellis are a big privately held American agricultural company. And because of that, our previous, well, our previous owner was just a holding company. So we didn't get any products from them. Wilbur Ellis can flow us some new products. We are now in the organic acid game and some of you will be familiar and some of you won't with them and you're gonna learn more about them. We have two entries now in this market. Alpine Soil Max, which is a 12% humic acid. I won't get into the real deep details on it basically a humic acid will mimic the good stuff from organic matter so you're going to mix it maybe with your starter maybe with your uan there's some different applications and then the full the foliar version of an organic acid it's a fulvic acid to help chelate help drive things into the plant also helps the soil as alpine envoy good products mix well sometimes if you've played with that market space some of them can kind of look like coffee grinds they're not that nice to work with so these are pretty good. They're screened well, and any comments we've had this spring of guys using them, they're working really good.